Okay, folks, you know what time it is. No, that. It, it's time for that. I mean, it's time for this, too. But. It's time for that. That, my friends, is a single-cylinder air-cooled diesel engine from somewhere in Asia. And if I remember right, without looking at the data plate, I can't, I promise, I can't see it from here. I believe it says it's 6.6 .6 kilowatts. This is from memory from about two years ago, which is about eight horsepower, if I remember right. I, again, you know, faulty memory, right? Right? But, so some buddies of mine bought this on Craigslist, you know, anyone who remembers that. Bought it on Craigslist for, I don't know, three or four hundred bucks. I gave one guy 300 bucks for it. He's supposed to distribute it amongst the others. Not my problem. But they never used it. They had, we had a few ideas for it. Back when I did Baja SAE, we were thinking about, you know, maybe it fits in a, in one of the Bajas that we had made. And, you know, diesel, cool, right? Um, didn't end up happening, but, you know, time makes fools of us all. But, here it is because this has completely lost spark at this point. I mean, maybe I could have the fuel off and you wouldn't know it, but she, she got no spark. And that's because it turns out I pressure washed it. Might look a little plainer than the last video. Pressure washed it and blew all the insulation off of points wired to the magneto and the spark plug wire. So. Yeah, and I could replace that with a coil, right? I could run a coil off the points, 12 volts off the battery, right? But that doesn't fit very well. I buy a coil, I buy a resistor, or I can replace the magneto, and that involves pulling the engine, which I needed to do anyway to figure out why it smokes so bad. But if I'm going to have the engine out, why shouldn't I just... So first, I need to get a bunch of stuff out of the way. Now, if I remember correctly, I'm going to see how I can find this, by the way. The advertisements for this particular garden tractor unit said that a woman, so in 1968, that was intended to imply a weaker person, which I'm not going to say I believe in that, right? We're not having that debate right here. All I'm saying is, they said that a woman, an average woman in 1968, now just imagine what women were pictured to be in 1968, not my image, right? Just, you know, public eye, was supposed to be able to have that deck on or off in five minutes. And I would like to see the woman in case you weren't sure, this is all Mouse Hotel. Gross. Yep, that's better. Now the motor. So here's the brakes. Here's the diesel. And size-wise, without using a tape measure, because I can't freaking find one, Well, without using a tape measure, pretty sure it'll fit. Well, well, that almost fits too good. Like, that's suspicious almost. Put a little extension in there. I might have to trim that a little bit. But, I mean, that's close for the oil drain. Oil fills, I mean, kind of close. I, you know, I'll have to do a little trimming there, but it'll be all right. I will, this will be interesting. I think I will use a CV shaft probably from the engine to the bevel gearbox. So that'll be, you know, a little bit of, 
I think the back CV joint would fit in there. Yeah, probably. Get all the crap out of there, it would. Yeah, it'll probably work. I mean... Wow, that's... I'd say that fits. That's a, that's a pass. That's a fit check pass. Well, as you can see, I've got some more junk done out of the way, like at least temporarily, so that I can easily get to that drive shaft. Now, now I'm finding a good way to pick this thing up. Now it's as easy as... as easy as connect rod A through slot B and build a drive shaft from here to here. Before I publish this video, I'm of course going to have to look up how many horsepower this thing is. I think, if I remember right, it's less than uh, power category 0 to 8. Okay, 6.5 kilowatt. All right, I remembered that part pretty much right. 6.5 kilowatt. Let's figure out how many horsepowers that is. Update. I think I might be an idiot. I'm looking closer at this and how this motor is sitting in here and thinking, hmm, I don't know if it might be impossible to see on video. Maybe you can see it from the outside. The frame starts to slope up. That's a, oh, look at the focus. The frame starts to slope up right here, right? Okay. Let's see if I can. Oh, yeah. Shit. That base plate that's bolted on ends there. So the whole thing is going. So if I cut that plate thinner, I'm a bet between, well, I might, oh man, I don't know. I might just not use that plate. I don't know if I can move the motor back that far, maybe. Uh, I might just not use that plate and then I can use the factory drive shaft. I, well, let's, let's play with it. Okay, I got the original drive shaft back in and loosely assembled now that I've got the plate cut down for this motor. And it's made a big difference. So this is free hanging. So this is, it's got the weight of the shaft hanging off of it. So I'm gonna pick it up to where I feel like it's in about neutrally, I don't know, neutrally buoyant for lack of a better term. And try to sneak in. That seems pretty close and of course you know I'm gonna use the bolt holes and whatnot to center it but that seems pretty decent look at it from the top again free state it's a little that way uh, I've got yeah you know, I can go past where it needs to be so let's go up and over to where about I think it's gonna land about there and we are clearing everything that is going to save me so much time. And I think I might use that rope start accessory. I don't know. I don't want to ruin that. I don't want to make a permanent. No, I think I'll build something. Well, yeah, I should build something. As I might have mentioned, I'm going to be needing an adapter. So I've got this plate that's made to that same bolt pattern that's on the flywheel. And this tube that's nice and squared off on the lathe, all clean, everything's cleaned up, ready for welding. And then this plate, I'm going to weld that on, and I'm not going to drill and tap that until I've got it on there and welded and squared up in case it, you know, moves or anything uh, while it's cooling. Because unlike on this side, I'm going to bore all this out a little bit. There's just a little bit of protrusion off the engine to help pilot that. But this the only mechanism for lining that up is those two bolt holes so those have to be perfect so i'm gonna weld that up bore it out weld this on and then drill these and they'll be ready to have paint and go together 
Okay, did change the design just a little bit, put a little step in there so that that fits real good and tight on there to help locate it. Okay, good, good snug fit and line up there. Now just got to weld on the cross piece for that and then drill the holes in it. Lay it out and drill the holes in it. That'll be kind of fun. Okay, first I'm thinking we got it all chucked up here. Looks like it's pretty square actually. So I'm going to face it off and then <clears throat> I think uh, I might go ahead and kind of turn the outside a little bit too, put a radius on it. And then... All right, I kind of changed my plans. I decided not to face that and kind of gave up on making the corners there because, uh, yeah, that plate is the only thing that's holding that together. So I think I'm just going to scribe my line, which I need a two and a half inch bolt circle. So I turn my thread and tool around here. I'm going to find the center and then I'm going to strike a line at two and a half inches diameter. There it is, my two and a half inch scribe mark. Let's just check it here. Oh yeah, yep, that's right on. Okay, I've got some stuff bolted back together here. Got the middle section back on there. Got a little bit of something started for an exhaust. Got to fit check the grill with that. And then, yep, the hood is definitely going to fit over that. I might have to figure out how to index this decompression lever down. But other than, ooh, I don't know if I'll be able to do that unless there's, unless it comes apart on the inside because it's welded on the outside. Oh, crap. Yep, we'll see though. Okay, let's hear this thing make some noise. I can't find my correct starting handle, so we're going to use this ratchet strap. I'm not in here, so I'm going to fit them up. You might be able to see here I don't have the starter. If I just got that over and over, you can have these so I stop by and grab that at some point, probably in the pendant's day weekend. Keep out a few wraps. And then this has been sitting for a bit without fuel in it, I think. Well, it didn't have gas or fuel tank hooked up, so I couldn't have fuel on it. We'll just give it a little bit of a bit of encouragement. Let's see what happens.
Okay, I've still got a couple little things to do, such as hook up the choke cable and the compression lever, uh, come up with a better way to drain the oil, uh, wire up the alternator, the stator, or whatever that is. I'm having a hard time finding documentation on this thing, uh, but I'll just attack that with the multimeter and figure out what that's putting out, find a rectifier, regulator, whatever it needs, and put a starter on it, and then it's good to go. So, I think what we'll do now is we'll see how she does an 82 degree cold start. Let's close this one out. So thanks for watching along. I don't know what to do with this one next besides keep on using it for home. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. But I might find some more fun activities for it. But for now, let's get it cranked up on the road. that again. Deep compression. Might just be why an electric starter is going to be nice. It starts nicely warm, and it's 82 degrees. 